Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com a nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. A lot of things to cover today. A lot of things we discussed in last night's video uh, that played out incredibly, incredibly well today. We'll get to the individual pivots in a second. Just a, a just a, a an order, uh, just to kind of handle the order of business. I know a lot of you guys are brand new to trading, uh, brand new uh, to technical analysis, whatever the case may be. Um, and, and I know you're kind of on the fence is, are pivots the right for you? Is this something uh, I could take advantage? And again, I, I, I'm the first person who will say not everything is for everybody, right? I, I will say that. Uh, but if you are on the fence uh, and you want to try out pivots, um, our guys, Kyler and Kenyon, let me you know, let us know. Uh, they're running a 24-hour uh, flash sale. It's like 47 bucks to try it out for 30 days, right? Pivots are completely different, very patient-oriented. Uh, all in, included into technical analysis and market sentiment. Uh, you know, write it out for 30 days. If this is something that makes business sense to you, makes something, all the feasibility in the world, then that's great. You've been exposed to it. If not, you move on today. We continue to be in, uh, we continue to be uh, social media friends. But it, pivots are really, really cool. Uh, we're the only ones that trade the PS60 theory in this fashion. So if you are uh, kind of curious, uh, we are running a flash sale for 24 hours. Uh, it'll be in the link below, and hopefully, I'll get to see a, a lot of new friends uh, and make a lot of new uh, make a lot of new acquaintances. So let's talk about the market, right? So we talked about yesterday going into uh, yesterday going into today um, that yesterday was Yom Kippur. A lot of uh, traders were gone. A lot of uh, uh, um, a lot of Jewish traders were gone. All the big heavy decision makers were gone. There was no there was no juice yesterday to the upside, and there was no fear to the downside. It was pretty obvious. The market just did absolutely nothing. And the question was, going into today's session was, well, what's going to happen, right? What's going to happen when everybody comes back and the money is being bet in the middle of the table? We, we got our answers pretty, pretty quickly, right? Uh, very, very quickly. Kind of backtracked from a couple of weeks ago, right? So we lost a 50-day moving average on the queues, you know, roughly around... September the 7th, right? And this is what started this really big cycle uh, to the downside. If you've been kind of following along this channel, uh, you know kind of how aggressive to the sell side uh, we've been. It's been you know, pretty damn cool. Or again, does, does it need the market to go down every single day? No, absolutely not. And we'll get to that in a second. But the point is, once stocks confirm technically and there's technical damage, usually a sell-off is to follow, and that's what's going to happen. If you guys remember the previous, right, the previous range bottom, was the August 18th low, right? We've been talking about this August 18th low probably for about probably for about a week or so, right? Even we'll go back to last night's video, we talked about if this, uh, if the low from yesterday's channel gets confirmed, we should test the August 18th lows. We did that, right? We did that, and what came followed was pretty intense selling. Again, we'll get to uh, the individual pivots in a second, but the most important part was how the market kind of went orderly lower, right? There wasn't a lot of violence. There wasn't a lot of fear, but it was steady selling. It was almost like a program started and they just started walking down the market. Not a lot of rallies. Usually you get uh, usually you get a lot of snapback rallies in the middle of the day. Usually you would have levels that are important, such as the August 18 lows, that there is a little bit of a fist fight, right, to seize whose control. Bulls are trying to put in the double bottom. Bears are trying to retain that level. There was none of that, right? There was none of that. We went through that uh, 54, 71, August 18 lows pretty quickly, and they just kept on walking it down, walking it down, walking it down. And now this is the lowest close in this whole formation going back to August 18th. Uh, so not a good thing, okay? Does this automatically mean this is it? The market's going to go down 500 points tomorrow. No, it doesn't mean that, right? Uh, we had a pretty big intensive sell-off today. Uh, when you look at the scoreboard here, you got uh, the Dow down 1%. You have the S&P down 1.5%. Uh, and you have the NASDAQ down a little bit more than 1.5%. Again, technical damage doesn't mean the next day 100% everything's going to go lower. 
but it does mean we are in a very bit of trouble if, if you are a perma bull. Again, I'm a trader. I know a lot of you guys are traders. We trade both sides of the market. Uh, for us, it, it's not a matter of being right or trying to guess. It's listening to what the price action is telling us and waiting for confirmation on the research and the data that we've embraced the night before. That's all it is. That's all it's been. Uh, nobody knows where the market's going to go the next day. If that was the if that was the case, we would be all in Mads buying power and every single every single ounce uh, to pull the market out. We, it's not about that, right? It's it's all about taking taking data uh, and waiting for that data to confirm. And when it does, usually good things are going to happen. Uh, if we look at the SPYs, right, kind of the same scenario playing out. SPY has just been orderly. This is kind of what we talk about orderly. Yesterday they stopped at the linear regression line. And today they stopped, right? They stopped today at the 150 day moving average that we talked about yesterday. It's a very, very orderly sell. Doesn't mean uh, it doesn't get exaggerated. Doesn't mean it's not uh, it's not going to get violent, but so far it's been very, very uh, orderly. But again, the scoreboard is with the scoreboard here. Let me give you guys kind of a, 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 a potential, right? A potential of what could happen next, okay? Like we talked about in last night's video. For me, for me as of last night, to be at least a tradable rally back. We talked about it last night's video. The bulls needed to reclaim 362, right? We talked about this 362 level last night. For the bears to kind of get comfortable, they needed to reclaim yesterday's range, which they obviously did. Here's where you see this whole orange line, right? This whole orange line is the five-day moving average. Most traders won't acknowledge it. Most traders probably don't even know it's there. For me, it's a very, very important area. Uh, it shows who's in control of short term, right? Short term, that's all it is. That's why it's the five day moving average, not the five month, five year, five day moving average. And you can see here for the last uh, for the last two weeks, every single time it hit the orange line, it gets faded. It's the orange line, it gets faded. So this is why that 362 was so important going into today's session, because we would have reclaimed back the 362. And guess what? We couldn't have done it. So as long as that five day is just going lower, 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 we're going to start, we're going to continue to put in lower highs and lower lows. And that's exactly what we're seeing here for the last uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row. Uh, the bulls desperately need to reclaim back the five day moving average. The bears, and again, this is kind of what we talk about. This is the lowest close in this whole formation going back to August 18th. Now they have a runaway train. Well, actually the other way around. Now they have a potential swan dive effect. To the next demand again that's what the whole ps60 theory is all about stocks trade from supply to supply and then they trade from demand right which we saw here where we lost and now the next demand zone is all the way down to 348 again it doesn't mean the market is going to get killed tomorrow okay we were anytime you have a really big move especially one and a half percent move on pretty much all the major indexes the old major benchmarks you could get a dead cat route. You could. A dead cat balance, like I've been saying through this whole time since we lose the 50 day moving average, they don't mean anything, right? You see, you know, you see the, the Dow going up 200, like, oh, that's it. This is the bottom. You see the NASA going up 50, 60 points. Oh, that's the bottom. It's not the bottom. Stocks are just making, continuously making lower highs and they keep on getting stuffed into supply. That's the key, key understanding. For the market to be good, again, we need to reclaim back the five day moving average. So when you go into tomorrow's session, you're going to see a lot of names brutally damaged, right? Absolutely brutally damaged. Um, now there's a whole series of new names. I'll give you guys some ideas uh, for tomorrow that potentially could get the next legs cut out for them. It's very, very important to understand that. So even if we do have a dead cat bounce tomorrow, which I couldn't care less to buy anything in a dead cat bounce, I actually traded, we talked about uh, a potential dead cat bounce today, you know, last night's video on Tesla and NVIDIA. We actually traded both of them. They actually did okay, right? Did okay before the market got pulled. We'll get to, again, we'll get to individual pivots in a second, but it's very, very rare that you're going to find something that you're going to turn around and say, wow, this stock has measured potential in a potential avalanche effect, which will, you know, there's technical damage evolved. So let's talk about the pivots, right? Let's talk about today's pivots. Um, a lot of these names... I gave you guys last night on the video. Again, if you if you are you know if you are a religious follower of this channel and you watch this daily, first of all, thank you very much. If you are brand new, click the like button, click the share button, click you know the, the subscribe button. Come aboard. You'll get these videos on a nightly basis and on the weekend. Uh, we talked a lot about these video uh, about these setups 
and they played out very, very aggressively. So let's talk about them, right? Let's talk about them. KYBO, again, from last night's video, recent IPO, 3480s, rejected twice, needs to build. Again, keep this in mind. Anything that you're trading to the upside has to be cash flow, okay? You're, you're going against you're going against the tidal wave. You're not going with it. So KY, did I get the symbol wrong? I think I might have gotten the symbol wrong. Was it KVYO? KVYO? Yeah, KVYO. So yeah, so KVYO uh, took out the 3480s, traded you know all the way up to 3560. An 80 cent move on the 35 dollar stock, considering how crappy the market actually was today, wasn't bad. If you if you traded today, great job. Not really my thing. Uh, NET, I'm still waiting. We'll talk about that in a second. Marvel, I'm still waiting. Talked about that. Last night, we talked about uh, Microsoft. Remember, 315, right? It held the same area twice, back-to-back -back days. Well, Microsoft got hit, right? It finally lost that level, and the stock got hit. It took out the 315 pivot. Uh, it went all the way down to 310. 310 now becomes a major level because it's now will confirm the 150-day moving average. If it confirms the 150-day moving average, look how much room you have to the downside. So beautiful, beautiful move today on Microsoft. Again, this is the lowest close in this whole formation. Again, can it bounce tomorrow into the five-day moving average? Sure, why not, right? But the point is, a lot. again, technical damage being done all over the place. Guys, watch that 310 level uh, for the foreseeable future. If this thing starts losing 310, there's gonna be a lot more room. So you're talking about a move 315 to 310, on Microsoft, um, Oracle. Remember we were talking about Oracle last night? Earnings low. Oracle, 107.30, earnings low. Any close blow starts next leg down. Here was Oracle. Took down the 107.30 that we talked about last night's video. Went down to 104. This thing starts losing 104 tomorrow. Again, you, you see it had potential room all the way down to 100. Uh, Oracle was really good. Uh, crowd, I know it made it move in the morning. I wasn't watching it for the whole day. Let, let's see what together what it did. Uh, 159 held twice for builds below can flush. Um, again, another name we talked about last night's video. Yeah, so it took out 59, went down to 57, and then actually had a reverse a reversal to the upside. Um, NVIDIA. NVIDIA, we actually traded to the upside. There was two pivots today to the upside. One was NVIDIA, one was Tesla. But, you know, both of them were pretty decent cash flow. Uh, 2550 needs to build. Uh, there's initial supply there at 2660s. Uh, it needs to build above it to stretch, right? So it needs to stretch above uh, above 27. So it took out this channel, you know, traded up about a you know you know a couple of bucks, traded up about a couple of bucks, and obviously reverse course. Uh, Tesla, uh, Apple. Oh yeah, this this was definitely the, the, the big move, at least uh, at least for for the macro purposes. We talked about Apple yesterday. Uh, 173.50 key level. If it builds below, it can flush. I still have a runner uh, overnight. So it took out this whole channel, guys. Remember those August 18 lows? Took out everything. Uh, this is the lowest close in the whole formation. They were coming for uh, the 170, the 167.50 uh, weeklies and next week's put. So again, this thing has uh, more downside potential for the foreseeable future. But great, great move today on Apple. Uh, yeah, KYVO, nice pop, you know, tra trade up 70 cents. Uh, Qs, remember the August 18 lows, right? That's the theme for the last few days. Uh, 354.60s confirmed the August lows. And now this is the lowest close in this whole formation here. Uh, they traded down to 5320s. Again, lowest close in the whole formation on the Qs. And that's about it. I believe that's about it. That's about it. So listen. Very, very aggressive day. Uh, we waited for it. We planned it out. We talked about it for two, three days. The importance of the August 18 close. Uh, it's August 18 uh, uh, set up to the downside. The bulls finally gave up. Uh, the, the August 18 lows got confirmed. And what resulted was a pretty aggressive washout. Again, uh, I'm holding just some runners on uh, Apple. Right? I'm holding some runners on Apple, uh, the CRRG that we've been talking about now every single day finally went lower. I'm actually up 25 cents on this thing in like a week. I'm joking, but yeah, I mean that's a, that's not really a big move, but you know I'm a, hopefully crack soon. Uh, MGNI, uh, that I, again, this is like day four, day five for me. I'm finally back in the money on this thing. Hopefully, this thing finally starts to crack. So let me give you guys uh, some ideas uh, for tomorrow. Uh, Goodyear Tire, right? Goodyear tire is very close to the bottom range. This is not the first time uh, you heard me talk about the symbol. It's been holding up, holding up, holding up. It's going to be a slow mover. It's not going to be fast. It's not going to be sexy. 
But if this thing finally gets below this channel here, it could finally start moving lower. Uh, look at plants here, right? This is a macro channel starting to form. You can see here again, August 18 lows, right? If it starts losing the August 18 lows, this thing could start getting hit. So keep an eye on that as well. Uh, NET, uh, NET, look how close this thing is to cracking, guys. This is a nice, juicy uh, bear flag. If this thing starts losing this whole bottom channel here, this thing could get a hit as well. Obviously, continuation for Apple, Microsoft, uh, Oracle, they're all in the cards. Again, a lot of names got really hit today, really beat up. And again, if you didn't put in your work, if you didn't understand uh, the importance of that August 18 level, then you're sitting there today uh, with with a really really um, dumbfounded reaction to what happened. How to you know? How can you possibly see this market? Uh, you know, who could have possibly seen this market happen? Well, yeah, if you looked at charts, you probably seen. You probably prepare for it. So again, thank you very much for all your viewership, for all your uh, time to spending with us. Again, if you are curious about pivots, guys, again, we're running a 24 hour uh, flash sale, guys. It's 47 bucks. Spend the next month with us. See if it's for you, right? It's not for everybody, but see if it's for you. And if it is, it's going to open up your eyes to something that you haven't been exposed before. Guys, God bless. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.